Welcome back all, this is Daz from Moto Array Techniques. So a little bit of a different video this week. I'm gonna go through the durations of my DA and A-Class South Australian Railways Lubid van. This is the first van of MRT scale prints. So the reason for the video is it's gonna show the ease of construction and some of the other issues that rise out of 3D printing and some of the compromises that I've had to make. So a little bit of a history for the van. So the van, there were 71 vans in its class, which were built by various builders between 1900 and 1923. And they were used for the cartage of goods of non-perishable nature, but required some sort of ventilation to them. The original class A class was then reclassed as the DA during the 1920s. Number 4346 was the second last of the series in May 1923. And that was built by Perry Engineering at Myland. In 1964, it was sent to the Gilman Yard for use as a tool van, which replaced the, the N251 uh, until it was written off. It was then placed in the museum in the 28th of May in 1997, and obviously now sits at the Port Dock Museum at Port Adelaide. So if you would like the look of one of these vans, please reach out to me. Um, email link below, mrtscaleprints at gmail. So that's enough of the waffle. Let's get started and get into this. MRT Scale Prints, helping you to add realism to your model railway. We are producing craftsman quality prints in various scales, including HO, O and N scales. We are proudly Australian owned and operated. www.modelrailwaytechniques.com What we'll quickly go through here is what's going to come into the kit. So we'll start from the top left corner here. So this is the KD number five knuckle coupler. We've got the draft gear spring assembly and also the draft gear boxes with the lids. Here we've got uh, the screw set that attaches the number five KD to the chassis assembly. Half mil brass wire here, and I'll explain through why I've added that for a little bit later in the video. And this is the set of the DA decal set, um, water slide type decals that I had made. I've added that, that whole number range uh, so you can number them individually if you wish. In the middle here, we've got steam era wheels, which is the WH8B pack, which is the 10.5 mil 10 spoke version. Top right here is the 3D printed chassis. And the bottom right here is the 3D printed boxcar section of the Lubid van. Let's get started on how we're going to put this together. So one of my philosophies moving forward with this, I want this build to be a very quick and easy build to put together. So someone in an afternoon or an evening could just about together at least an undercoat of paint on it and within a 24 hours you could have it running on your layout. So those of you who don't know much about 3D printing, there is some compromises. So what I mean by that is, I believe this, this product that sits between somewhere between ready to run injection molded, which is obviously the, the flagship from Ocision and companies like that. And then we've got on the other end of the spectrum, the, the vacuum resin type things of South Australian Railways. So both have their place within our hobby, both beautiful um, one has very little work one has a little bit more work one has no work being the ready to run model obviously the resin side of things uh, a little bit more work to get them up and um, up to standard so I've tried to pitch this somewhere in between so there are some compromises though so I will, I'll quickly go through those so with 3d printed items you obviously it prints in very thin layers. So we're looking at port 0.4 of a millimeter layer. So to give you some sort of idea, that particular box is in the vicinity of, I think six to 700 layers of UV cured resin. With that, you do get some, what will you call, I would call artifacts. 
in in the in the print so and then depending on which angle you want to print at is depending on where you want to have the artifacts so i've decided that there's a few more artifacts on the roof side because that can just be rubbed back nice and easily using some um some cut and dry sandpaper or sort of a 1200 grit sandpaper but moving forward i believe this da van has uh, come up quite nicely with everything that uh, we've done to it. So we've had quite a number of iter iterations of this van, but moving forward, I'm, I'm very, very happy with this. With the chassis, we try to, to have all the detail parts in one, in one print. So with that, we've had to use a bit of modeler's license. There are probably some parts that people might say are a little bit over scale. Yes, I agree with that, but 3D printing is such that it is very difficult to print extremely thin parts. So moving forward with that. So what I ended up doing, so the main problem we had when we were printing this was this, this brace through from, from, from uh, sorry, wheel journal to wheel journal. So some of them have printed nicely, but some have not. So that's another inherent issue of 3D printing is, is the failure rate. So particularly the small little parts like this. So some are, they've printed quite nicely, but this one here, you could argue it's got, it's a little bit of warping to it. So what I've, I've left it there purely to show you where these items are. If you're happy with that side of things, well, you can leave it, but I have actually added this little bit of wire to it as well. So it's just a matter of cutting that, that part of the resin out using a sprue cutter, like these ones from Micromart, and then just gluing these back in, and they do come up quite nicely. So you would also notice that some models will come with some ports attached still to it. So if I can get nice close in there, so what I mean by supports are these. So those supports there are not a part of the model. So when you 3D print, you need to, obviously each layer, you need to add supports because it prints a layer at a time. So what I, the reason I've left particularly these ones in, you can see this brake detail here is very, very fine. So what it is just a matter of doing is grabbing your sprue cutter very, very carefully and just cutting them out. So then at that point, it's just a matter of grabbing your, your tweezers and just lifting that, that portion out. So they will come out quite easily. And I'll just go through quickly, cut these other ones out. Next aspect we're gonna look at is adding the, the wheel sets. Now, initially with this build, I looked at trying to get, if I can actually get the focus in there, getting a Daryl and bearing into this location here. But we had all sorts of trouble trying to get the bearing to, to fit properly. So I ended up abandoning that idea. And the reason I did that was doing it the way I'm about to show you, I had better results with a better rolling, running um, wagon than I did actually with trying to add the bearing to it. So now with UV cured resin, it's very, very, very delicate. So this next section you have to do very carefully. So there is a little bit of play there from side to side, but if you wrench it in there with a screwdriver or something, you will break off your, your wheel detail. So if I can get there in as best I can, there's some little sort of gouges there. Little, little notches I should say, not gouges, but notches within the print. So what we'll start with the, the end that's away from the handbrake, because that's probably the easiest one to do. It's just a matter of lying the wheel set flat, applying just a little bit of pressure with your thumb on the middle there. Very carefully pulling the, the side of the the side frame out and then go on the other side and then 
and then the inserting the, uh, the wheel there. So you can sort of see that wheel does have a little bit of resistance to it. So what we're now gonna do is, it's up to you how, you how you wanna do it. So I normally go in just with a very fine blade or you can go in with a, a very fine uh, drill bit and just ever so slightly take out some of the resin. So also another issue obviously with the 3D printed resin is is the shrinkage rate. So each wagon could be slightly different. So hence why I've gone away from the bearing idea. So I've been able to get uh, quite free, um, fine running. So it's just a matter of you just go in with, and you just scratch away like that on each side. And then reinsert the bearing. Normally what I'll do, I'll add some graphite powder and that will assist with um, lubricating the, uh, the bearing journal. So just after a few minutes of manipulation with the, the hobby blade, you can sort of see now that that wheel is running quite nicely and that's with um, nothing in there. That's purely just the, the pin of the axle sitting against the, the side of the, the wheel frame. So with the other side, you do have to be a little more careful. Um, same, same sort of approach and I will show you. So I always start with the one away from the uh, the handbrake. It's just a matter of apply some pressure in the middle with your, your thumb, depending on whether you're left or right handed. Turn it around. Now, what I do is I don't try to put my thumb in there because if you do, I will guarantee you'll break that brake detail away. So it's just a matter of, it's just a matter of maybe putting your hobby knife in there, just levering at it ever so quietly. So levering it ever so slightly and then it's just a matter of going in like that. So then it's just a matter of cl cleaning that up. So just to give you an idea, I probably pulled that wheel out three times, I think, to go from there. So as I talked uh, briefly earlier on in the video is about compromises. So one of the other compromises I have found and I've tried printing around it and I'm scratching my head moving forward with it is I'm getting a, just a, a slight little bit of raising through here. So this bottom edge is not quite square. So the, the way I've got around that, and it looks more than fine, is just getting some 400 grit sandpaper, lying it flat on a flat, hard surface, and just literally, I'll get, I've got some here, is just applying some pressure in the middle and just taking away that edge. So all it does is it just, we're only talking maybe a layer height, of printing layer, better to show you on the actual wagon. I'll just... So you can sort of see that it, it fits there quite nicely. So probably what you can do at this point is, and I won't go into this video because there's a myriad of ways of doing it and a thousand videos on YouTube is, if you want to just a little bit cut and dry to, to soften up the, the top of the, the wagon there, that's fine. I haven't done that with any of mine. A little bit texture has been nice. Undercoat that with some sort of gray primer. Put it aside, ready for whatever color you decide, um, SAR type gray. What we're gonna look at doing now quickly is how I go about putting the KD couplers on. So all I do is grab the top plate for the KD with a some sort of pacer type pencil or retractable pencil. Then I sort of put it in situ. Then it's just a matter of, all I do is just get the pencil and this is just to give me some sort of idea where I'm gonna drill this pilot hole. Okay, so what I'm looking at doing here next is using the Dremel. So the first hole I'm gonna drill through with is our, that's a one millimeter drill. Remember UV cast resin or UV cured resin, I should say, um, is is quite fragile. So don't try going through with a bigger drill at this point, because it's more than likely just to, to shatter the chassis. So I turn the the speed speed right down, and it's just a matter of slowly going through. So 
So what we're going to look at doing now is constructing the, the KD. So there's a myriad of probably videos out there. So this is just how I go about it. So if you want to skip through, that's fine. Can be a little bit fiddly. So the first thing is the top plate, then you put the, the spring mechanism. Now just make sure you get the knuckle cup around the correct way. Sometimes the spring just sits just a little bit proud. So and then we get the draft box. And just to make sure you go around to make sure the, the, the spring or the draft spring hasn't sort of come out through the side here. Then I just give it a little bit of a flick each side to make sure the mechanism is working correctly. There's nothing worse than getting it on there and then realizing it's not working. So then it's just a matter of lining it back up with that hole that you pre-drilled. Sorry, my fingers are in the way there. Some people don't use the screws. Um, personally, I normally just glue it glue with CA glue. Uh, I have a few modelers out there that I know that I've spoken to, you know who you are. We glue them. However, there are some modelers out there that do like the screw just in case you want to replace the, the KD for any reason. So it's just a matter of slowly letting the, the tap go through. So that's with the, the assembly in, in obviously installed. So the, I didn't bore you with it. So the next drill I went through with is between a two and a two and a half mil because the screws that I've selected here are a bit over three mil. There we go. So the next thing we'll look at doing is replacing the these braces through here. As I said, so, as I said, some models you could probably go through and use them, but this particular one I'm going to replace them with uh, the wire. You'll see where it comes back to a more squarer sort of shape. So that's where I cut it. So it's just a matter of at that point I just measure it. And that's 2.7 centimeters. And I'll just go through at that point and cut my wire to that, that length. So at this point, all it's uh, all we need to do is, I'll try to do this on the camera the best I can, is I've cut the, the brass wire to the correct length and just got a file, just a particular like a little metal file. Just squared the ends off. And then it's just a matter of getting, building up just a little bit of CA glue on the ends. And then just fitting that in place. Oh, it's still just a fraction too long. It's just a matter of building up a little bit of glue on the end after squaring the ends off with a, a metal file. This bit can be a little bit fiddly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'll show you what it looks like the other side. So it's just a matter of fitting it in between the two and then just holding it in place for a few seconds to let it dry. So I've now added the, the cross bracings on both the both sides, I should say. So as I said, this is one of the compromises of this model. Some of them are coming out okay, some are, are very, very thin, so hence why I've added the wire to, uh, so I'll let the, the modeler decide what they want to do with that. So obviously I haven't added the, the other the couple of box there, but it's exactly the same process, just on the other side. So then from there, all we need to do is to put the top on. Is It's just a matter of fitting it on there. So I'm not gonna show you the, the process of how to undercoat it and then spray it. There's plenty of other videos on the, the, the web on how to do that and I'll put a link below with the color that uh, we've been using for the SAR gray, if that's the, the way you want to go with it. Now that's uh, the end of the video. It's just going to be very short, sharp and shiny one just to go through some of the little bits and pieces that might come in the box. Also some of the compromises that you do have with a 3D printed model. So I just wanted to cover off on that so people don't, are not surprised about um, some of these inconsistencies you can get with 3D printing. So. A big shout out to Pegasus Designs who helped me design the STL file to print this and I'll put a link for them to below. Uh, a great crew there, Jerry and crew that uh, did all the CAD design for this so I must thank them immensely for the amount of times this model went backwards and forwards. 
uh, to get it right is uh, phenomenal and I thank them for their patience with me. So there is a, another van in the pipeline, I won't go too much into that, that will share a very similar uh, chassis to this one, chassis and design with the, the handbrake and the like, so watch out for that one. Also probably one last thing I will cover, I haven't covered off on weighting this, this wagon. I use the NMRA standard. I've since been told that possibly that that's too heavy for this van. It's obviously I'm gonna leave that totally up to modeler because obviously there's that, that standard which is uh, ounces over, over inches of, of length. And then it's obviously the Australian standard is my understanding as well. So I'll, I'll leave that totally up to you, how, how much you want to weight these wagons. They will need some, a little bit of weighting, probably over each end is what I've done, sort of so they, they roll nice and light, nicely. And as you see from the, the, the footage earlier on um, in the introduction of this video, I had it going at different speeds through uh, my slip switch in my yard. So. So thanks for watching, thanks for, for buying this if that's what you have, or just thanks for listening in uh, to me waffle on about this lovely little wagon. So as I said, there will be another wagon in the pipeline, which will probably more than likely be in the new year. Won't be Christmas as fastly approaching here in Australia in 2021. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Make sure you subscribe, click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon. Like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Technique.